Simple Cyber Defense Reviews, TP-Link ER-605. Welcome back to Simple Cyber Defense. In this video, we're going to review a new product I found on Amazon called the TP-Link ER605. What this little device is, it's a gigabit VPN router. It has a lot of functionalities. Uh, two of the, or three of the ones that I really like are the software-defined networking, which allows you to basically create VLANs on here and it comes up to five different ports for those which would, could be turned into WAN ports so if you have multiple internet connections you can connect this here but for my purposes I'm more interested in turning it into one LAN port and four VLAN ports. Another option is intelligent monitoring you can set it up as a way to uh, analyze the traffic that goes on to your network and to warn you when there are suspicious activities going on. And the last is to create a VPN network on your home uh, network to allow you to VPN into your network from anywhere in the world. So basically say you're in a coffee shop and you're connected to a coffee shop Wi-Fi that's not very trusted and many times we tell you to use a VPN. Well, if you can't afford a monthly VPN solution, then this is an option for you. You could create the VPN tunnel using this router and from your either cell phone, tablet, or laptop, or whatever device that you have connecting Wi-Fi, you can create a VPN solution so that you connect from your mobile device into your home network creating that encrypted tunnel so that traffic cannot be snooped on by the untrusted network and all of your traffic can be routed through your home and protect you from being snooped on while you're at the coffee shop or out and about and doing whatever. So in this video we're mostly going to be focusing on the VLAN uh, creation because a lot of times we talk about IoT devices and how we need to create separate networks on our home network so that they're isolated from the rest of the other devices that are on there. So for example if you have a light bulb that gets compromised from a hacker they won't have the ability to enter into your network through the light bulb and then compromise all your other devices. So let's begin by switching over to my computer. Over on my computer here, this is what you'll be greeted as when you first log in. This is your dashboard that gives you many different options here uh, how many connections you have on here and utilizations and all that good stuff so we're going to skip down here so if you look onto this taskbar here here's where you'll have your statistics of all the different traffic going through your network and all that and list of all the devices and mapping and all that so for our purpose, we're going to go down to settings here. And then we're going to create a new virtual network. So right here, we're going to go to wired networks. So here's all your WAN settings or your internet provided settings. And then here in the LAN port, this is what I have right now on my network. I have three different LANs. Uh, this is my main network that I have, and then here's my IoT network. So what we're going to do is we're going to click Create New, and here we're going to put in our name of our VLAN. 
And here are the options you have interface and VLAN. I purpose, I personally think the interface is the best option because it gives you the more abilities and control over what you're going to be creating. So in just VLAN, as you can see, this is all you have. And there's no really way that I found that you can control what goes on or how this gets set up. So the best thing to do is just put it on interface. The next here, the LAN interfaces. This is what the network is going to have access to. So for our purpose, we're going to create one that's going to be completely isolated from all the other ones. So we're going to hit the fourth one because I already, I'm already using LAN 1, 2, and 3, my other three networks. So here in LAN 4, and then on this LAN number, it's going to be the number of LANs that you have. Right now I'm using 1, 2, and 3, so this is going to be my fourth one. And then the, the gateway and, sub, and subnet, that's going to be your network ID, so 168. So one. I'm going to do a slash 24. So basically here, this is where you're going to put in your LAN network. It doesn't have to be the same number. You can actually have this as 10 or whatever you want. But for me, I'm just going to keep it simple and do 4. So the domain names, that's optional. I wouldn't even bother with it unless you know how to set that up and it's out of the scope that we're dealing with here so here we're going to leave the igmp snooping off and then in the dhcp servers we're going to enable them and then we're going to make our range of how many ranges of different ip addresses that we want on our network so 192.168.4. Now, this is going to be the starting one where all the different IP addresses get sent out. So I recommend doing dot two because your gateway is going to be one. And then the end address would be the last number that's going to be out given out and I usually recommend 254. So that way it gives you the IP range of two to 254. And then the DNS servers just leave it on auto, the least time, leave it at 120 minutes default. And then default gateway auto again, and then just leave basically all these the normal settings and I wouldn't worry about the advanced options unless you know exactly what you're doing so then we're just going to hit save and boom our network is created right here so right now this network is completely isolated and so any traffic on here won't be able to touch any of the other traffics unless we go into here and enable the different WAN ports so that if it's checked, then that network can grab traffic from those other networks. But right now, we're just creating one that's going to be completely isolated, so there's no need to make those other check marks. So right now we have four different networks this one being completely isolated from the other ones so that any traffic here cannot see the other traffics no matter what. All right, so that's the basic setups of the VLAN. So we're going to quickly go over some of the network security features on here. Um, so here's your access control lists. So it's basically you're creating lists. So creating rules to restrict access to your network. The good thing I like about this piece of hardware is you can also, you can, anytime you want to get more information, just click these 
little question marks and it, and it gives you a lot of different information on what you can do and what each part means so that's really good and then you can also do URL filterings again here this allows the network administrator to create rules to block or allow certain websites which protects it from web-based threats and deny access to malicious websites so if you have websites that you know that are malicious and you don't want on your network you can put them down here which is a really good idea and then here is where it gets really good the attack defenses so i recommend putting all of everything on it's not really going to slow down your network very much as long as you have a fast enough internet speed i've noticed that it didn't really slow down my network at all by putting all of these on so basically it will block different things like large pings and pinging from the WAN, which means that someone from the outside pinging from your inside network trying to see, okay, are there devices here? Are they not? So when you get a request from the outside internet into you, your WAN into your home network it's going to totally ignore them so it doesn't really know what's on your network um, and then the firewall you can put many different rules on here so here firewall is used to enhance the network security in state timeouts, you can specify the number of timeouts for a session, including TCP, UDP, and ICMP connections, which basically means it has that much time that you set that it can be inactive before it closes the port, which is always good to have. And there are many other different settings here that you can go through. Um, I just recommend going through each one and going into details. If you want us to create a separate video that goes over the firewall rules, you can comment below and then we'll easily create a video. Again, the same thing goes with the VPN here. We can create a separate video documenting on how to create this on this device again just leave a comment below and if we get enough interest we'll create a tutorial on how to create the vpns so with that said that concludes this video on the quick look on the vlan setups so again this device I got for about $60 on Amazon. A affiliate link will be posted on the links below. Again, I was not paid for any of my comments here and everything that I said in this video is completely on, on me and it's not influenced by anyone in any way. I'm not getting paid to do any of this. I actually use my own money to pay for this product, so uh, TP-Link has no idea that this video is being created. I just saw this device, bought it, tested it out, and thought it was really good, and so now I'm just creating a video for everyone to get a good look at it. Uh, if you found this helpful or if you want to get more expanded questions answered on this device, just leave them in the comments. And as, and as soon as I see enough interest, I will create other videos on this product to go over different things and probably go more in depth if you have more questions. So with that said, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for listening to the Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates. Join us next time when we dive into more security issues and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Plus, if you have a topic suggestion or want to support the podcast, stop by our website at simplecyberdefense.com.